What's up guys, Reef and Ain't Easy and neither is checking your nitrates. As of October 2020, this is the newest line of the HANA instruments that is made for marine testing. They test a bunch of different stuff. Now, you can tell right away, this is a much more complicated one, which is my guess as to why it's the most recent one. It was probably a lot harder to do and produce. Here are three other HANA uh, checkers, and they usually have the same form factor in terms of the box is usually this size, where you can see this guy, the box, is a lot bigger. And there's a reason for that. There's a lot more steps and a lot more intricacies within this HANA checker. So I am going to run you through how to do a nitrate test. That's how I used to test for nitrates, was this uh, NIOS test kit. It takes about eight minutes to do. I'm still undecided if the HANA, in my opinion, is better. I think it will be more accurate, especially for low ranges. However, due to the complexities, perhaps depending on what your goals are, it isn't the best test kit, in my personal opinion. With that being said, the LR here stands for low range, and if you are trying to dial in a low range, meaning zero to five parts per million, this is about as accurate as you get. You get zero to one, one to three, three to five, and 12, where that's gonna give a digital reading. But I know a lot of reefers out there, having accurate nitrates isn't that big of a deal. They just like to keep it in that range. Sometimes it's, you know, between zero and five. Sometimes it's between 10 and 20. Every reefer is a little bit different. Now, with this being low range, it's only going to give a readout between 0 and 5. You still can test for nitrates higher than 5. There's a dilution process, and that will be able to read from 5 to 50. But let's not waste any more time. Let me get right into how to do a test with this HANA checker. The results of your test are only as accurate as you are at actually performing the test. One thing is, we're talking about very small particles, so you want to make sure this is completely clean. And even the first time you use it, you want to rinse out your syringe, rinse this out with the water that you're testing. All right, so the first step, you need to take this big vial, this guy right here. Um, you're going to take this syringe. doesn't really matter. You can use anything. You just need to make sure you put exactly 7 milliliters of your tank water that you're testing for nitrates in here. If you're going to test for a higher amount than 5, you have to dilute it and then you're going to multiply the results by 10. So for the dilution method, you're going to use the one mil syringe so that you can be extremely accurate, and you're going to have the bottom ring of the black plunger come all the way up to the one mil line. Um, you can see this does point mil. If you tend to have a little air bubble at the bottom, flip it upside down, give it a couple clicks, let it rise up to the top. You're going to pull it past the one mark, and then you can push up and get that bubble out and then just keep expelling water till you have exactly one milliliter of water. We're gonna put that in this mixing bottle here. And you can use this uh, pipette dropper thing that, came, that comes with it. And you wanna take artificial seawater is what they call it. So this is the same water that you would use to do a water change on your tank. So you want it to be the same salinity as your tank. And basically this is just clean, fresh salt water so it has no nitrates in it that's the biggest thing and you're going to fill this up till you get to this 10 milliliter line in the mixing thing so if you've already put one millimeter in and this really is 10 milliliters we're essentially adding nine milliliters to this guy now you could use another syringe but the instructions say to use this i'm not 100 percent sure why other than you can drop it out to get it right at 10 or maybe because you want to keep this clean and only use this on the artificial water that has no nitrates so you don't contaminate anything. So you're really close to 10 now, I'm gonna... So water has a concave meniscus and you want to read this as you can see here in this picture as well as here. At the very bottom is where you want your line, whatever it may be. So now I have exactly 10 milliliters in my mixing bottle. Go ahead and put the cap on and you just want to give it a little shake, swirl, make sure that it's mixed up. Now the next step is you're going to take this syringe and screw in the blunt needle and you're going to pull out exactly 7 millimeters from your diluted solution. Now they want you to pull out 7 millimeters, dump the remaining 3, and then put the 7 milliliters back into here. You could just subtract 3, dump that out, and then you've got your 7 in here. 
why pull the seven out, dump it out, and then put it back in there. Unless they didn't just think of that, I defer from that logic that having exactly seven milliliters, which is easy to get with a syringe, is more important than making sure your dilution is dead on. All right, now when you go to pull the seven out, a uh, tip is keep this all the way down at the bottom. So I'm gonna keep that down and then I'm gonna pull up slowly until I get to exactly seven. Now I'm gonna discard this and then put those seven milliliters back in. Pro tip, you dump it out. It's pretty empty. I give it a little shake, try to get all that liquid out. It's empty. Now we're just gonna put the seven milliliters of diluted solution back in. And if your parts per million is under five, then you don't have to do the dilution. All you have to do is put exactly seven milliliters of tank water using this syringe. If you do do the dilution, you're just gonna multiply your results by 10. So you have three different reagents that you use and just remember to put them in alphabetical order. They all start with H1781 and then they have a letter and the letter is A, B, C. Remember, they go in alphabetical order with the steps that you're gonna do. Now, you're gonna take this syringe that measures up to five milliliters so that we can be accurate and make it a little easier on ourselves. We're gonna put this guy on him like that. All right, then you're gonna take your reagent A. It doesn't say you need to shake or anything, but I like to give it at least one to two rotations just to make sure this is uh, nice and mixed up and nothing settled out. Now, push the plunger all the way down and you're gonna have the plunger come up to the four. There's a couple rings you can see, that bottom ring is where you want the four. There'll be an air pocket, this much air, and that's fine. You wanna make sure this tip is submerged the entire time. Pull up to the four, and then you're just gonna put it in here, and it's gonna turn the water cloudy. All right, so you put the cap back on, done with this guy for now. So you put the A in, then right after you put the B in, I'll show you how to do this. You just follow these lines cutting. And this is a gray powder. And then I kind of grab the two ends and try to push them together to get it to open up. If it doesn't, I open this up and kind of use my fingers. All right, so yeah, you push like that and I'll open up for you. And then what I do is I create a crease on this back one here. Nice little crease from the bottom. And it gives the powder a little uh, runway to drop down. Give it a couple taps, a couple shakes. And then we're just gonna pour this into our mixing vial. Look down there, make sure that no powder is hiding on the edges. You can give it a little shake, a couple taps. All right, all the powder's in. Put the cap on and shake for one minute. Don't shake for 50 seconds, don't shake for a minute and 10 seconds. I like to use a timer, one minute timer, shake. That way I know, hey, when this timer goes off, I'm good and I don't have to like be sitting there watching. I can just shake until I hear the noise. All right, timer's going off. Right when the timer's off, you're gonna take this guy, you're gonna put it all the way down at the bottom, extract all the liquid. Keep this up against the glass and get as much liquid as you can. All right, so now you have this guy, it'll actually say top there. I like to unscrew it and I put the top down. This is the bottom part, it has the part that the fluid's gonna come out. I just put it right there so it holds it nice and flat for me. Now we're gonna take one of these filters and you'll notice there's a little lip around the edge of this. You wanna make sure the filter is perfectly centered and that none of the edges of the circle are up over the lip, that they're actually down in there. So when you screw it on, it uh, is nice and flat. I'll show you what that looks like. Then you're gonna screw this guy on, take out this needle. and screw this on. Now the important part here is that you go really, really slow. So you're gonna put that on there like this, and then you're just gonna push this plunger down. 
and it's going to take a little bit of time. You should have one drop at a time just coming out. And say it takes like 30 seconds, maybe longer. But just go slow and get all that solution to come out. You'll notice it's gray up here and it's clear down there. That's what you're looking for. And as you get close to this 10 milliliter line, you're going to start watching the drops and you want to drop until you get exactly 10 milliliters and stop. I'm getting close. If you pull this plunger back a little bit, it'll stop it from continuing to drip. It's gonna to continue to drip after you take it out unless you pull that plunger back. All right, so now we're gonna take this guy, we're gonna cap it, and we are going to clean the glass. Just put the cap on nice and tight, make sure there's no water, and then I take just uh, stuff you use to clean glass, like actual glasses that you wear. I twist it in the motion the cap goes on, then I get a firm grip and kind of move it up and down and just make sure I clean that glass. Pro tip is, right where that 10 millimeter, have that facing you and put it into your thing just like that. So we're actually gonna turn this guy on. Make sure there's no air bubbles or anything. There shouldn't be because you dripped it real slow. If there is, just give it a couple taps on the table, have the air bubbles rise. Shut it, then hit the button. Okay, now that it says C2, it's ready to add the last reagent. Again, I make that little crease, gives it a nice little ramp for the powder to slide down. Give it some taps so the powder comes down. And then you might notice some powder in the edges. Now we're going to cap it, shake it for two minutes really vigorously, and you'll notice, and you'll notice that it changes colors, it's actually pretty cool. The closer you have to five nitrates, the darker the color will be. The closer you have to zero nitrates, the lighter the color will be. It's so right at about one minute, got 50 seconds left. You can see it's starting to turn this pinkish color. All right, a couple pro tips. One is clean the glass again. See if there's any air bubbles. Bubbles will be rising to the top. If you see them kind of stuck on the side of the glass, give it a couple taps on the table. Glass is clean, and then put it in the same way you put it in to get the C1 measurement. So I put that 10 millimeter right at the front. Then you're gonna close this. Then you're gonna hold until it says eight minutes. It's a timer, it'll start ticking down. Let it sit. Put a timer on your phone for eight minutes because eight minutes is a long time. Unless you're sitting there watching, what's gonna happen is you're gonna walk away, do something, get a phone call, and they'll be like, oh yeah, I forgot about the checker. You're gonna come back and look and it's going to be off because it's gonna turn itself off and you're gonna have to redo the whole thing. Got a reading of 0.48 with the diluted method. So if you multiply that by 10, saying that there's 4.8 parts per million of nitrate in my aquarium water.